let's build different houses based on one empty shell of a building and one color scheme but using only the base game and one expansion pack each time. Today we will revisit city living and build a penthouse. If you are new to a shell challenge concept, it is a build challenge when someone creates just a plain empty box and uploads it to the gallery and you have to turn it into a functional sims build. With the only rule not to change, add or delete any of the existing exterior walls. So in this case the box is a set of perimeter walls where I'm currently adding doors and windows and struggling on a floor plan. You can place the shell on any lot, change the lot type to any residential or community one. You can rotate the shell, add any half walls, platforms, make any floor plan. Literally anything you can think of you can build it, but you are just not allowed to touch any of the existing walls. By the way, if we meet for the first time, I'm Marina, a gamer and the Sims 4 builder. I do a lot of shell challenges and other Sims 4 builds here on my YouTube channel, so please consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. And please don't worry about the furniture that you see while I'm working on the floor plan, as it is filler furniture that will be replaced. Within my shell challenge I decided to limit packs, to use only one expansion at a time and build based on the theme of a chosen expansion. I will link previous builds that I've completed within this challenge if you want to go back and watch them. I also break down shell challenge rules in detail there, but trust me there is only one rule to keep in mind. Today is city living turn and it is perfect opportunity to revisit penthouses. I was obsessed with apartments and penthouses when the city living first came out. I guess as many of us did. It came out in 2017, seven years ago. Just think about it for a sec. When you compare the quality of the build by to growing together or for end, you can clearly see the difference. But City Living has some great items that I still use every day in my builds. For example, rocks. But most of them dated badly. I had similar feelings for previous builds for Get to Work and Get Together, but in my opinion, City Living made a better step forward. By the way, I'm talking only about the build by now because I find gameplay quality similar throughout all expansions and I am not good at cast, so I cannot comment on that part. Anyways, we've made some good progress on this penthouse, so I should have disclosed a color scheme by now. I am allowed to use peach, pink, purple, black and white and orange toned wood. Originally I wanted it to be pastels color scheme, but the older packs just don't give me a chance to use pastels so far. City Living has actually some nice pink swatches, but otherwise it has ugly vibrant swatches. Again magenta and color combos like bright pink with bright yellow. I can think of a house where I can use those swatches, but they are not versatile enough and I would rather have pastels instead. Actually, the step forward I was talking about is that most of the items have plain white and plain black swatches, which is immediately a huge win for city living. The color scheme went a bit off within this house because I went for ugly magenta. When else can I do that? I mixed it with pink and a lot of black, so I, I actually like this house a lot, but for me as a mini Minimalist it is too much in some places. It is a force build and the fourth time I think I am failing in my own challenge. No, I am not. I think I created decent playable builds. You let me know in the comments if you agree. Actually, I made an interesting looking bathroom in this house. Like maybe strange, but you will understand once you see, so bear with me. I tried to use maximum items from city living, like everything that could possibly fit into penthouse aesthetics and chosen color scheme. Exterior wise I wanted to use city living windows and doors, but they have blue glass, almost teal color. There is normal glass on the inside of those windows, but I still felt like it wasn't what I was looking for. So instead I used big windows from the base game and rounded arched windows on the facade, as I figured they complement the default apartment building the most. And I used brick on the facade, which is not actually in line with the color scheme, but it suited the building underneath. I will also use brick inside and I came up with an excuse that I allowed myself to use orange toned wood, so here I replaced it with brick. Is it a good excuse? Of course, if I was building it outside of the shell challenge, it would be a completely different build. <laughs> obviously. But it is interesting for me to work around building challenges. A kind reminder that it is a force build I am creating based on this shell. And I struggled with the floor plan a lot as I didn't want to recreate any of the previous ones. Not that I could copy any, 
For reference, I've already built modern house in Oasis Springs, which is pretty normal floor plan wise, but then there was an alien spaceship and Tudor house converted into a gym for a fight club. So that floor plans are too far from being recreated within this penthouse. But still I struggled with layout here a lot. Penthouse must have an elevator as the game sees it as a spawn point for your sims. So you actually enter the house from the middle of the house in my case. And there should be special mailbox and trash chute which are both ugly. But that's how the game functions. How apartments function in the sims 4. So I thought I would like to have a dedicated area for an elevator which will serve like an entrance and that will flow into open kitchen living dining area. And behind all of that there will be bedrooms. I mostly implemented the idea but I did not make a dedicated entrance space. So sims will walk directly into open space or spawn directly in open space. I always talk about the sims with too much emphasis on realism. However sims don't care. I care greatly about realism. So if it doesn't ruin gameplay functionality I would prefer to have some kind of hallway separating the elevator from the house. But the floor plan is okay as it is considering I was working with the shell. Also the shell fitted on this lot almost perfectly. It matched the back edge of the lot pretty well and overall shape made sense with two balconies to the sides. I filled the gap on the facade with a planter box with some bushes and I will also put some bushes on balconies. I did not want to go too overboard with landscaping because it's not landscaping on the penthouse, right? So just a couple of bushes and small trees which came in city living in planter boxes. I will come back to the exterior when I will be furnishing balconies and making some finishing touches but at this point of the building I was so excited to furnish the penthouse that I could not wait much longer. I started with the kitchen. I always start with kitchens. I don't know why but as soon as I can figure out how kitchen looks it is easier for me to furnish the rest. We got full kitchen set in city living. It was the first one added to the game and it includes counters, cabinets, stove and fridge. Sounds perfect right? But it is gross. Basically it is the cheapest base game set in dirty swatches, which is great to have for certain builds, for abandoned houses for example, or low price rentals, but genuinely it could be just a swatch for the base game set. So of course I skipped it and used lofted style counters from the base game, with expensive appliances. This is strangely laid out kitchen, I don't usually experiment with the shape like this. I go for classic corner kitchen or galley kitchen, but this one has an external corner piece and big island with the bar and bar stools. There is a plenty of space for sims to cook and you can add additional appliances if you have any other packs. I love how there is a mix of closed cabinets with open shelving and I got to use this hanging duct over stove. All this metal and exposed brick textures make me think of it as the loft kitchen, although the house in general is not actually a loft right? I don't know. The kitchen is very black and white and it is not bad. I just wish it had more color. I only used pink bar stools here and all the color was put into dining and living areas. I cannot choose dining tables and chairs lately. Like it is the biggest struggle for me in my recent builds. Because I lean towards glass tables and there are not many options especially in older packs. And again I tried to use as much city living furniture as possible. But the dining table is too big for this room and chairs look too heavy. Dining area is in between kitchen and living and it should have matched both in some way. The kitchen is black and white, the living room will be pink and I will use matching couch set with metal accents. So I went for simple glass dining table and simple base game chairs but in magenta color because I thought of it as a transition from black in the kitchen to dark magenta and then pink in the living room. Like a gradient. I probably pronounced that wrong, I always do. <laughs> I raised the living area on a platform and since I have some routine glitches within gameplay lately, I added stairs. Normally sims can step up on one and two high platforms without stairs, but recently my sims was not able to do that. And later that day she stepped up on a platform raised five times. That just did not seem normal to me. I want to be sure that buildings that I am sharing with you are functional. So to be on the safe side I added stairs here. 
although I don't like how they look. I gave The Sims a fancy big TV, gaming console, and also I used a giant music player. I will put it in the dining area, but of course Sims can listen to music anywhere within this open space. This is like an honor to an older PAX. There is a smaller version of the similar music player, but it's not good either. I think we first got a normal looking speaker in high school years, which is locked behind pre-order bonus, so I and majority of the Sims community don't have it. And the next one was in Growing Together. Correct me if I'm wrong. Realistically, most of us use earbuds. So Sims can do too. But speakers are useful for gameplay. Smart speaker does not count, it is a different story. There will be also a breakfast nook. It is not actually a nook, just a smaller table closer to the kitchen. And to the other side of the open space I thought should be a skill building nook. I wanted to have photo studio from Moschino Pack somewhere, but since I don't have it, I turned it into music instrument storage. Storage because Sims can drag those items in live mode all over the place. And you don't have to practice music in that nook if you don't want to. I found exposed pipes in city living that I completely forgot about. I saw that there were from another pack, but I will add them in some places where exposed brick is. Miraculously, pipes come in the perfect pitch swatch, while most of the items from the pack don't. Why? It's okay, it's fine. <laughs> pipes contribute to this house being mostly loft style, but I used the simple metal swatch. We are moving to the bedrooms and I wanted to continue that dark purple that magenta color in the primary bedroom. Please don't freak out, it looks very ugly right now, but I promise it will look good once done. Trust the process. It has an ensuite bathroom, also you can see a sneak peek of furnished bathrooms. I will show you everything during the tour at the end of the video, as in a nutshell, bathrooms layout is very simple, it's just the colors that make them pop. City Living has nice purple swatch of a bed and OK purple curtain swatch. By the way, City Living curtains are too white and they did not fit on any of the chosen windows, so I put them only in both bedrooms. I had to mix that with base game side tables and dresser. In general, city living furniture is just so chaotic, like there is a rundown furniture, ultra modern furniture at the time when the pack came out, and community lots furniture. Absolute mess. But the fluffy rug in neutral swatches is one of the best in the entire game. If it wasn't included in this pack, I don't know what I would use in this room. I would probably just sit and cry. <laughs> Anyways, I put a treadmill in this bedroom to fill the space better. Realistic treadmills are always placed in most random places IRL in houses, wherever there was a room for it. So it fits nicely here, okay? <laughs> the second bedroom is furnished in more pink color scheme. Trust the process. I will change all the items to brighter swatches. And I finally used a city living dresser in this bedroom. I like it a lot, but since it has only vibrant painted swatches, I don't get to use it very often. I pictured this as a teen room, but it of course can be for a child or an adult, for anything basically. There will be a desk with the computer and pretty much that's it, as the room is quite small. There is an office slash study room next to the second bedroom. Again, nothing too special, a desk with a laptop and a bookshelf. It can be turned into a bedroom if you need to, but it is a small room, so we can probably fit a toddler or a child. In general, I managed to fit a lot of activities within this penthouse. I gave them murals to paint on both balconies planter boxes, a grill outside, that treadmill, as well as the games table and bubble machine. I forgot what that thing is called in game, but if you know, you know. <laughs> Sims would not get bored. I pictured one of the balconies which is closer to the kitchen to be for parties and for guests and for all of that noisy activities, while the second balcony is more private for penthouse owners and their closest friends. Again, the Sims don't know that difference, but we can play pretend that there is this area differentiation. The build is almost done, there are only minor details that I will add. By the way, all ceilings are painted and all the light switches are placed. I cannot skip that. And I will add some collectibles, just a few snow globes and posters from City Living Collection. Nothing too extreme. So now let's get back into the game for a quick tour. This is the penthouse lot where I built it in San Mashuno. The cost glitched. It cost around 140 thousand simoleons. I wasn't doing a budget build, but the final price is not actually that bad. I thought it would be more expensive. So this is what the finished exterior looks like. There is a private 
with balcony and the second one with more activities. Also on the exterior I put a skylight for the main bathroom as there are no windows. But it's okay when there are no windows in the bathroom. I just thought it would be cool to have at least some source of natural light. You enter the penthouse over here. Sims will spawn near the elevator. There is a mailbox, living area, dining. This is what a finished kitchen and breakfast nook look like. I put this painting to complement the brick on the opposite wall. However, I'm not so sure about this decision. I struggle with art choices lately. <laughs> From the main open space, you enter this hallway. There is a trash chute, by the way. And there are doors to private areas. To the right there is primary bedroom and it's ensuite bathroom. I have never used this swatch of city living plumbing. Never. But it somewhat matched the general color scheme and one of the features of the pack is a speaking toilet. So I included it here. Main bathroom is almost the same but there is a shower instead of a tub. There is a simple secondary bedroom and to the left there is an office or study room. This penthouse is available on the gallery. My ID is Submarino IT. And if you feel like hanging around, I suggest you watch my take on The Sims 4 official shell challenge. Thank you for diving into this speed build with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye!